Speaker. The Honourable Te Ururoa Flevel. Uh, te mana whakawā tēnā koe i tēnei ata. A koe. Uh, ka mihi rā ki a koe uh, pēni mo te āhua tangoa tātou whakarite i tēnei rā. Uh, ka mutu ki ngā kōrero ko puta i tēnei rā, kai ngā huanga o tarana ki maunga, te maunga tī tō hea, te nā koutou, te nā koutou e rarau ki rote te whare pāre mata. Ara mai ki te whare pāre mata. Uh, hau ngā ahua tū reiti i tāku tū hara mai. Uh, wai ho tērā take ki reira. Ke fai fai hare te koro taku tsuhine, ke tau te rangi Māori ki wāngin via tāpā. Uh, ko te kaupapa nui, ko tai mai ko utau i tēnei rangi, ka pai, ka pai, ka pai. Uh, ko tāku, e whakapiri atu ki ngā koro, ko korero hea, e aku tuakana, e aku tuahine ki a ko utau, hare mai, hare mai me ngā mate huhua ko pā mai ki a ko utau o Taranaki. A Taranaki whānui tonu. I rongo nei ngā korero te minite i tēnei ata mō te hunga ko a ngaru atu te tiroanga kanohi, ka tangiaki. I rongo i ngā ingoa i, i kitea, i rangona, e au, i te wā i au, e nohoa nei taranaki. Ko John Naiman mā, ko tērā momo, ko mate kā, Jaisi Bingham, tērā hunga, e, i kaha nei ki te hāpai tēnei o ngā kaupapa, ko e tahi ko ngaro, e ngari a nei koutou ko tāmai tēnei tēne rā Daisy, koutou ko tō tira, ure mou, Hare mai. Whai whai hāre ngai ngā tapu wai o rātou mā. Ko te kōrero tuatahi ko tīmata, te hangi. He oranga ngā kau ko tāmai kūtua i tēnei rangi. He te whakatūtu ki tēnei kau papa. Ko oti kei a rātou te whakatako tō kōrero. Ko te wāhi keo i te whakaro ake me pehe e tāhi ai te whaiwhai hāri e rā kōrero i te mea i ruku hōhunu nei rei rātou ki te hōhunu tango o tēnei kaupapa. Nō reira, ko tāku e pēnana, ko huri ki te reo pākeha, ke mā mā ke taku kōrero. Mr. Speaker, as someone that sort of lives close to Taranaki Maungu, at least can see it from Whanganui, I'm sure that you'll join with me in welcoming our visitors to the Whare Pāre Mata, uh, about 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, young as I look, uh, I started, uh, went across to Taranaki, uh, having been chased by my wife, uh, uh, to head across to Taranaki to, uh, to try to contribute on my, my wife's side. I've got to say, when I arrived in Taranaki, uh, as someone that went from Rotorua, I was taken aback by the few speakers of Māori that they had amongst their people. I was taken aback by the understanding of history. I was taken aback by, I suppose, almost a depression that you sometimes felt when you went out to Pariaka on the 18th and 19th of every month. And I never got to grips with it until I actually understood that when you have your land taken from you, you're bound to be depressed. You're bound to be angry. You're bound to be deeply sad and would you put it out there? Probably not. These people are very understanding. These people are very understanding. They decided, no, no, we won't go the war approach. Well, yeah, they did, actually. <laughs> but there's another way. There's another way. So I wanted to talk about three people, not just because they, uh, well, actually, they're people that I sort of know or about, but I thought rather than duplicate some of the other information that's been around, they, for me, sort of uh, give me an idea about how how Taranaki feel about certain issues. Uh, when I was there, we tried to awake that sleeping giant, or what we call proactive initiators, other will call, others will call protesters. Uh, but for us, we're called proactive initiators. And the idea was to try and give information to people, and boy, did we awake a bit of a giant, and we'll talk about that later on in the Taranaki and Te Atewa bills. But there were Three people, I think, that, uh, that sort of really gave it to me in terms of a real understanding about Taranaki history and about how they feel about confiscation and what happened to their people. The first person is by the name of Tohe Pakonga Ngātai. Now, I, I met that crower. He gave me the willies. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he was sort of direct sort of fellow. He just came straight, bang. And you'd understand it because his name was Tohe Pakonga. Tohoe meaning to fight, pakonga, a battle. So his whole life 
was understanding the confiscation issues of Taranaki. And his tūpuna before him obviously knew it was a big issue because they called him Tohe Pakanga. And he didn't let him down because he lived by Tohe Pakanga. <laughs> Everything he did was about Tohe, even how he talked. But actually, at his heart, he was a very humble man. But man, talk about confiscation. You wake a sleeping giant. Why? Because he learned from his elders about the effects of confiscation on Taranaki people across the board. So I pay tribute to Tohe Pakanga. And there's actually, there's a couple other people in this gallery whose names are called Tohe as well. Um, <laughs> even not officially, some of them are still Tohe. Behind your backs. <coughs> the second person I want to pay tribute to is a person by the name of Hori Manuirirangi. Now, Hori Manuirirangi, I don't know if he's in the gallery today, probably not. <laughs> Hori Manuirirangi probably not is in the gallery because he doesn't agree with necessarily what's happening here. <laughs> and and you'd understand that as well, Mr. Speaker, because when I was there 30 to 40 years ago, Hori Manuirirangi used to haul me up, especially after we got these courses going, and say, Rada, what are we going to do? Let's march. <laughs> Let's do something. I want my land back. Give it back to Nazi too. <laughs> That's all he's ever been on about. Even 30 years on, I see him on Taranaki. Uh, te <laughs> Let's have a talk. I want my land back. Get it off PKW. <laughs> and you'd understand that because Hori Manuirirangi is of that generation, like Mate Ka, who heard about and talked about confiscation on their marae at almost every opportunity. And you'd understand it because most of the waiata, this is a from Wataroa fella, are all about confiscation. They're all about the effects of the crown on Taranaki people. Pretty much most of them. I think when we hear the waiata from Te Atsawa, it'll be e -re -re -ra. maybe not. <laughs> but that's all about the arrival of the soldiers into Pariaka. When Taranaki come in, we might hear about the pukara. Pukara meaning the trumpet, the bugle. Maybe not. They might sing another waiata. But it doesn't matter because whatever waiata they choose, i te rao mahe, pretty much all of them, all are about confiscation. Pretty much all of them. And that's how deep-seated confiscation is in the hearts and minds of Taranaki people. And for me, as somebody that went and stayed there, you cannot understand the issues of confiscation until you go to the people, you sit with the people, and actually live with the people and understand their hurt. There must be something to it because for the last umpteen hundred, well, maybe not hundred years, but certainly for a fair while, every month, people go to Parihaka on the 18th and 19th of every month. Not broken. Why is that? Why? Because they have an opportunity to talk to their issues. What are their issues? Confiscation. Land, disempowerment, the whole shooting match. So there's a second person I want to talk about, uh, Hori Manuirirangi, love him to death. <laughs> I don't mind those ones. I don't mind those ones. It's important that they have a voice. It's important they have a voice to keep us all rock solid. Bit of a whole hard times, but that's all right. <laughs> but Hori Manuirirangi, no one can question his commitment to his people. No one. He might have a different view about the world, but that's all right. Kone te ahotango te tangata. And the last person I want to talk to is somebody I never had the fortune to, to meet, although I wish I, I did. His name was Ti Tokowaru. I say Ti Tokowaru because, again, Ti Tokowaru is somebody that's in the hearts and minds of certainly the people that are here today. Uh, Why? Because you've got to ask yourself, how can a person have their land lost from them Get into scraps, deal to the settlers, have battles, and against all of that confiscation, flip to the absolute opposite of passive resistance. How is that possible? With all that pain, you lose your land, you're in scrapping all the time, year in, year out. I've got a whole blinging biography of, of Te Tokowaru. 
Over years, he had five, five uh, conferences to try and pull everybody together, formed alliances up in, Ta- in Waikato. And then for some reason, he goes, flip, over to the other side. <laughs> Christianity, a faith and hope for his people, and again, call people together to, in a sense, stand with Te Whetiorongomai and Tohukakai and a whole new way of thinking about the engagement with Crown Forces. Peace, for goodness sake. Peace after what happened to them and the loss of their land. And um, I, I don't know, I'll ever get a, 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 a full understanding of, of the loss of what that feels like just for somebody to come in. Actually, I've seen the map. If you see the confiscation line, Mr. Speaker, and somebody, some, actually somebody probably in here at the time did some lines. They were lousy, lousy drawers because it went crooked now and again. But that was the confiscation line. They just went down the page on a map, a few jinks here and there, and said everything to the left is now the crowns. I mean, can we really get a, any understanding of that happened in here? Somebody did it, put a line on a map, said, oh, a bit hard, that way too much bush, let's go a little bit left, straight down, and say everything to the left now belongs to the crown. I mean, there's something seriously wrong. Must have been something seriously long, wrong at that time. There must have been some, some, who knows, that somebody could do that and say, righto, go make it happen. So I talk about names because some names in Taranaki history, Mr. Speaker, are celebrated on some of those street names in Te Hawera. Oh, I don't know about Okaiawa, there's only a few streets there. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, Rainer Brooks, there's only a few streets there. Uh, but, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, names are important because despite the fact that we are doing a settlement today, which hopefully will be the light into the future, the names of those people that are involved in that issue are still in the hearts and minds, and the worst part is they will always be. Why? Because they are the street names of a number of streets in Taranaki, in Hawera, in New Plymouth, in Opunake, and possibly Okaiawa. And that being the case, let's think about history. I hope, I hope that the journals that come from the Taranaki settlement are available to every school in this country. And in fact, people should read them, in particular people associated with Hobson's choice, to understand what happened in this country's history. Final point I make, Mr. Speaker, talking about names and just to wrap it up, I want to name the Minister for Treaty Settlements, the Honourable Christopher Finlayson, for the work that he's done to advance his kaupapa. We could have been coming back next year to do this. Uh, uh, I want to acknowledge you and the work that you've done. Hey, tewe, it's going to be a long morning. I've got other good things to say this morning. Uh, but for now, ko tāku, ko te kiatu. Hara mai, me te pare kawa kawa o te hunga o kuangaro. Ke tangi he, tātou i tēnei rā. Ngari waiho tērā ki reira. A pō pō, he rā anō, ko fiti mai te rā, ko, 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 ko ki te mai ai te mārama tango ngā kaupapa kōra i kōkiri he i tēnei rā tonu nei. Kia kaha kia toa i roto i ngā tau kai mūti araro. Kia kaua tātou i hoki whakamuri. Ngari, ara anō te pairangi. Tēnā kūtau, tēnā kūtau. Kia ora tātou katoa. <coughs> Tēnā koutou, uh, 